You can listen to The Professional Left on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, or on our website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for April 27th, 2018. It's not safe for work. Recorded live from the Cornfield Resistance, where we never purge our writers, it's The Professional Left with Drip Glass and Blue Gal. A big news just broke on uh, Friday afternoon. It's not the Trump administration firing a bunch of people. No. It's red state. Yeah. Can you explain red. to our listeners what red state is just briefly? Once, once upon a time. Did I kick back, everybody? It's going to take about half an hour, 45 minutes. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. We're out of time, says Sorry, Steve. we're out of time. <laughs> yeah. All of our sponsors have taken up all of our time. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, red state was – I originally began as sort of the – conservative answer the shitty shitty conservative answer to uh daily codes oh uh, it was going to be the big blogging universe where all the bloggers hung and it was going to be great and it was going to be conservative and it just turned into the you know what everything else conservative does a shit pile of of group think and piss off the liberals the conservative movement died about 25 years ago 30 years ago 40 years ago really uh, if you want to not to put too fine a point on it, and and there's been nothing new under the sun since, except tax cuts and hating liberals. And uh, the after the Bush administration collaped, and you had places like Daily Kos popping up, and you know Drift Glass Blog and the News Blog and Blue Gals Blog and places like that, they needed a uh, a way to get on the internet, get their message out there, and Drudge wasn't cutting it, so they they went with. Uh, a web format. And of course, it filled up immediately with the worst writers in America, all of whom <laughs> made a living doing it because there's always money at the Wingnut Welfare Trough. And mm-hmm. it's one of the it's now become one of the many sites around here, including the Federalist and Town Hall and places like that, where you just get money from anonymous donors in unlimited amounts to keep pumping this bilge out into the world. In, um, in apparently really large amounts. I mean, we're yeah. we're not sure, but boy, do they hide their donors well. They do, particularly they do. at the Federalist. But they do, and uh, uh, yeah. we, we, but a lot of money, a, yeah. a real, real lot, actual, real house buying, hiring mm-hmm. staff, spending mm-hmm. money, being able to you know crank out books, hire publicists, buy your way on the television. Real fucking money is spent every day on the right. Uh, to promote the worst people who have the worst ideas. Uh-huh. That's the only way they stay alive is on is is by throwing a mountain of money at every problem. And it does work. Uh, but Red State was one of those. Uh, and it uh, apparently they had a big purge today because the one split that was inevitable was the people who have some sort of vestigial gag reflex that were okay with fascism, but were not okay with the tweeting. Yeah, well, I think that's it. It's it has to do with uh, the tone. They don't like the tone of the Trump administration, right? And they apparently don't mind at all that. And I think this is the number one story this week, regardless of all the other noise that's going on. Mm-hmm. Mitch McConnell is stacking the courts, stacking the circuit courts with yes. young conservatives. Yes, and we'll be there for decades. We'll be there for decades, mm-hmm. and. That is going to affect everything we try to do to make the world a better place. Yep. And so no wonder he's being silent about Trump. No wonder he's saying impeachment. We're not even going to try to protect Mueller. That that bill doesn't come to the floor. He's busy for building a movement for posterity. Yes. He's building the sustainable, right. ongoing, permanent conservative state, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, which will consist of uh, kicking the shit out of the poor, hating liberals, and cutting taxes until there's zero, and then using the hundred trillion dollar deficit that zero taxes will create to destroy what's left of the New Deal. Right, that's the plan. That's and the then plan. we just have uh, the theocrats ruling the the morality sphere, the public sphere, telling women where, where and when. You have Kevin Williamson running the morality world, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. then you have Paul Ryan running the corporate world, right. and we're just going to have. Rule by direct corporate fiat, rule by people, by the Koch brothers. They'll right. just run the country. Right. And the thing that stands between that happening 
and not happening uh it are shitty blogs like ours and, sh- well, and, and an active citizens like that care yeah yes oh the, the march i mean the marches in arizona uh yesterday were amazing mm-hmm. uh the marches the the activate the activated public base uh, i make a little bit light of it but the activated public base is uh breathtaking the marches is, were it, for um teachers and education teachers. right and uh were, were went on for miles the margin in the very red district on Tuesday in the special yeah. election for that house <laughs> seat was 5% in a yeah. uh, district that Trump won by 21%. Uh, so there is a blue wave coming, and Mitch McConnell knows it, no doubt. And he's rushing. He is rushing uh, very quietly mm-hmm. to stack the courts. Yeah, he's doing what... Um... Uh, Herman Goering did at the end of World War II. He's stealing, <laughs> he's stealing as much art as he possibly can, <laughs> stuffing it into his car and trying to get the hell out of the country right. with all of his ill-gotten gains. Mm-hmm. Uh, remember his wife? Remember his wife is still a cabinet member. Uh, yeah. So he's also Let's got reason to be quiet about that too. Yeah. So. But today was a big day. This week was a big week for uh for the good Lord split you. <laughs> um, they they have I, I, they're they're speaking of splitting, their stock is splitting every couple of weeks because yeah. not only did did uh, Ronnie Jackson uh, get his served his walking papers or drinking papers, whichever he prefers. Because Thursday he does his drinking, so <laughs> <laughs> a bad day for him to do testimony, I guess. Uh, but red state got purged today of all the anti-Trump uh, writers. Yes, yeah, so people who are you, use totally the, cool. use the discount code red state to get a yeah. discount on your goodbye, your fired cake, right? Yeah, sheet cake the size of Texas is coming your way. Um, um, but yeah, we have our traditional, we have two of our newer, but traditional sponsors. We welcome again, uh, Berry O's Berry Oatmeal, mm-hmm. uh, which especially this week, it's that oatmeal when you're eating it, you say, you know, this isn't that great. It's okay, but it's not that great. Then later when it's all gone, you suddenly say, man, I wish some of that, I had some of the oatmeal back. Yeah. That's Berry O Berry Oatmeal. It's so much better than you knew at the time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, uh, uh Laura Ingram's sponsors aren't coming back apparently no, she no. cannot drink slim fast at her desk anymore because slim fast <laughs> has abandoned her uh, so uh, we we love barrios berry oatmeal we also love our other sponsor stolen property brothers yes built on the michael yeah. cohen model the name says it all stolen property brothers just so those of you that have been following our twitter stream and i've i deleted a tweet today which i hardly ever do yes. um we were trying to get back onto an Amazon uh, Associates account. Yes, we were. And uh, the reason we were doing that is Drift Glass and I together, if we count both of us having a job as podcasters, yes, we have we do. four part-time jobs between us. Uh, Five? We've got, about, we've got about six. Okay. All right. Um, oh, that's right. Including, that's right. That's right. Including, yeah. Including the, the contract work. Yep. Yep. But none of them pay well, none They're of them all... pay enough. No one job pays enough to pay our health insurance in the course right. of a month. And, and it makes us one of tens of millions of Americans yeah. who are in the same position. Exactly. So... Exactly. So we understand, you know, where this is not a complaint to anyone out there listening. We love our listeners. You guys are great. Uh, we have to find a model for podcasting that will pay our health insurance. We kind of have yeah. to do that this year. Long story short, we tried yesterday to apply for an Amazon account, yes. and I put a couple of book ads on our website and tweeted yeah. about it. And uh, we were—I got an email this morning that we were rejected from uh, having an account with Amazon. I don't—I don't know if we're banned for life from Amazon, but I went over. I was just curious to go over and see what the the latest. Uh, version of their terms and conditions for being an Amazon associate are. And one of the things is uh, they give you a line that you have to put with your ads that says, you know, we are an Amazon associate and we receive uh, a percentage or whatever. It's a, it's a one sentence thing that you're required to put on your blog. That's fine. Uh, And then it's, there's a basically an NDA, a gag order of, You are not allowed to mention your relationship with Amazon in any other way, period. Which means you, which means my tweet saying 
we're back on Amazon. If you want to go to over to our website and see the new ads we have up, breaks mm -hmm. the agreement that you have with Amazon. Yeah. So uh, you're not allowed to tell anybody that you're on Amazon. You're not allowed to make any point of it. Uh, and it's clear to me that given their first quarter earnings reports showing their profits up massively, mm -hmm. uh, that they don't need us anymore. Yeah. It was free money, you know, for the time that we had it, and it was good money. Yeah, well, that was... That a, did that cover was, our health insurance. You know, that was that a really substantial did. portion yeah. of our income. Of the income that we got from the podcast. It was, it was at the time that we lost it, it was more than half of our income. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't, like I said, I'm not mad at anybody. I'm not mad at no. anybody listening. I'm just realizing, and you and I are realizing, that getting more, you know, we have about 7,500 listeners a week yeah. for our podcast on average. Mm -hmm. And we literally have one or two percent of those people donating every month right. or donating when they can. I mean, my ma if I were to sell a mailing list, <laughs> mm -hmm. which I will never do, of people who have contacted us to to give us money, mm -hmm. um, that is that is a list of a hundred people. Yeah. You know, it, it really is one to two percent. So mm -hmm. uh, if that's the model, uh, and uh, you know, the rest, the rest of the people that listen and we love you all, I'm not mad at anybody. Nope. The nope. rest of the people have a mindset that podcasting is free. I listen to it for free. I listen to lots of podcasts. I listen to their ads. I'm, I, you know, take advantage of their advertising. And mm -hmm. that's the model that I use to, con to listen to podcasts. And I expect that I expect an ad on the show. Then yeah. we have to, uh, remove our purity cloak and say, okay, you know, we'll take that. We'll do that. We'll, we'll find an ad somewhere. Yeah. We'll find, we'll, we'll have to find several or yeah. we can just grow our podcast tenfold. <laughs> okay. Um, Dude, but, we could talk about this for another hour. We yes, really have not to do that. <laughs> let's move on to Bible bitch. Shall we? Which again, not a lot of people, not a lot not of people a lot out of there. Podcasts going to yeah. be quoting scripture at you and and but this week it's not about scripture it really is we don't evangelize but we do like to talk about faith issues right and i want to just talk about faith issues and give a shout out to a show that i watched this week mm -hmm. uh and was not expecting it to be religious and it turned out to be very religious uh mm -hmm. there is an episode of queer eye on netflix that is uh remarkable in that uh the person that the fab five and and this is a show that is we're calling the show the tale of three reboots our show the tale of three reboots this first reboot is a reboot of a show from the 90s called queer eye for the straight guy where five gay men would make over usually a single man who needed grooming help he needed to get his game on right yeah. he needed to get yeah. it uh, his apartment cleaned up and he needed a fresh haircut and new clothes mm -hmm. And so this new version, which has been rebooted for Netflix, is the same kind of reality show format where they visit a real person. Uh, they do provide new clothes and a new pad and, uh, you know, change of attitude towards dating or whatever it is, your spouse. Uh, this takes place in Georgia. So the people that they are remaking in, in at least two instances appear to be evangelical Christians. And one in particular is clearly uh, a very religious person. His dining room table is made out of the pews from the church he grew up in. And he married his sweetheart and had six children with her and is working two jobs and is exhausted all the time and has a lot of problems with just keeping it together. He's exhausted. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but he's doing this. He's very devoted to his wife. He's very devoted to his church and his children. And one of the, uh, people that one of the five gay men who come to t make over this person's life, uh, grew up in an evangelical community in the South and, uh, talked very frankly. And, and this is episode five, if you want to go and watch it talked very frankly 
about uh, growing up in this environment, being told that gay people are evil, uh, go- gay people are going to hell, um, all that kind of thing. And he was a in a Christian rock band. He was a church active in youth organizing and doing all the right things yeah. and realizing all of a sudden, oh, wait, I'm not evil. I'm, you know, having to hide that and suppress it and suppress it. And one day realizing I can't hide this anymore. This is who I am. And then having to grow spiritually, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. that's yeah. when the spiritual growth comes in. And I think we've all gone through that in one way or another, perhaps not with this kind of intensity. Uh, but this man that he's helping, uh, the the man, the gay man's name is Bobby, and the straight man who he's helping is also named Bobby. Bobby Camp is his name. Uh, they are literally in the garden planting vegetables. <laughs> and he asks, the gay man asks Bobby, the straight man that he's helping, uh, you know, what are your views on homosexuality? And uh, they have a very warm, accepting, kind, loving conversation about it. In part, uh, the, the reason that Bobby Camp has come around to reject the teachings of the church that he grew up in Right. Not the actual belief, not the actual Christian belief I understand, but right. the incredibly perverted version of Christianity. And bigoted, that, and bigoted, and bigoted. teaching uh-huh. of the church of their youth, which both right. of them have in common. You yes. know, they, both, they grew up in the same kind of environment. Same kind of people. Yeah. And mm-hmm. he said, you know, I came to see that, A, a lot of the gay people I knew were really good people, and a lot of the straight people I knew were really not. <laughs> And something has to be wrong here. You know, yeah. something has to be, there's something wrong with what they're teaching. It's, and they go on and talk about God in such a spiritual way. Uh, the difference between church teachings and spirituality, the difference between bigotry and love, and what is God? Is God love or is God bigotry? And understanding, growing spiritually, uh, to, to accept and love and um, not hate. I mean, sometimes that's where you have to start is not hating. And it it is, as I said on Twitter, it was the most um, genuine uh, religious conversion story expressed on television that I have ever seen. I can, I think I can consciously say that and this is reality television some of it is scripted some of it is going to be uh you, you know there there are times when they're you're looking at someone and and it's clear <laughs> you know this is this got to be scripted there's a camera crew in the room you know right. this they're, they're pretending that this is some sort of uh private moment between the couple and it's of course it's not the camera's there but and you have so you have the suspension of of belief or suspension of disbelief, disbelief does it say right. Right. Yeah, I, I understand. They're not having a private conversation. The camera's right in their face. But uh, it was still a very genuine moment for both of these people. And so I recommend that. I just wanted to recommend that show. Um, and then w- someone in church recommended to us the Liturgist podcast, correct? Right. You've right. had a chance to listen to that. I haven't yet. I, Tell I me about it. Uh, well, it's um, uh, we have at our church where we are both very active members um, and we are called upon to do lots of different things. There's a, a small group of, of, uh, of hard talking rebels, <laughs> yes, sir. hardcore liberal progressive people who are also very uh, sort of mission driven Yeah, uh, who want to make the world a better place and want to help their, their neighbors and really believe they're called to do that. And, and, and the church supports that by providing the structure of an adult Sunday school class for those people. Yeah. Right. And it, it, we are, uh, maybe we're being uh, caged off from the rest of the people as bad <laughs> I don't influences. Think so. I don't think, I don't think so. Cause they do let us mix with the other. They let me handle money for God's sake. <laughs> so they must trust me. Um, but there is a, a, and so several people in that group know our terrible secret that we swear when we're not in church and mm-hmm. we talk about, you know, Donald Trump being an asshole and Republican party. And which we live in a, you know, Trump country. So 
we're not we're not t- totally secret about it, but we're not. We've had people come up and go, "Was that your podcast?" It's like, mm-hmm. Yes, it is. Like blah 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 blah. So uh, one of the people there recommended this was recommending podcasts, and one of them was called The Liturgists, which I have listened to, and I trust her opinion, and it's it's pretty good. Um, I have skipped around a little bit, and I, I found one episode that you can go listen to if you want uh, on the Evangelicals. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's part two of the Evangelicals, and what I found interesting about it, and and hopeful and discouraging all at the same time is let's assume everyone involved in this podcast is is not faking it they're they're deeply faithful they believe in what they say mm-hmm. etc and they're, they're sincere mm-hmm. um they interviewed i believe her name is jen hatmaker uh i now follow her on twitter and she's uh she writes books she's an evangelical she's on television she's she's a go-go getter she's a sort of a liberal lefty change the world etc 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 um, who, uh, the quote I pulled from the podcast is this, the 81% really hurt when she found out that 81% of evangelicals are standing pl- right behind Donald Trump and think he's doing a great fucking job. Uh, she had no idea what to make of that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and I was, I'm, I'd like to talk to her one day mm-hmm. because I don't know how you can be that, that politically active and that famous or famous in that circle, write books, be on television, be an out and proud evangelical Christian. She stopped using the word evangelical mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and over a Trump. progressive, over Trump. a progressive slash liberal and not know who the fuck Jerry Falwell was. Yeah. Yeah. And not yeah. know the history of the perverse relationship between white conservative Christian evangelicals and the Republican Party that goes back 40 years. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't know how you miss that. Mm-hmm. I really, really don't know how, but she did apparently. This was, came as a complete shock to her that all these people that she grew up with and she thought she thought they shared the same kind of view of the world turned out to be monsters yeah. or completely alien to her understanding. And this has depressed – and the people who were talking to her were all like, yeah, yeah, it was a big shock to us. We did. And I don't know what to make of that. I think it has to do with the fact that they are not nearly – as politically aware as they think they are. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I think they're part of that third of the country uh, who are undecided mm-hmm, or independents mm-hmm. or centrists, or it's all loud and shouty. And I don't want any part of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know who's to f- at fault here. I, I don't want, I just want to go over here and help kids and feed the hungry, which is great. But the label you have chosen for yourself, the label you have, you've selected uh, and, and you're calling is going to put you in the crosshairs of a really big cultural battle that's been going on for decades. Yeah. And if you if you if you walk into that and you're shocked to find out that most evangelicals back Trump, this lying ten, you know, that that every cardinal sin he revels in, he's a racist, he's an adulterer, he's a greedy, you know, lying son of a bitch, and all these good Christian people who hated Bill Clinton. Mm-hmm. Because he had a D after mm-hmm. and who thought Barack Obama was probably a secret Muslim. He certainly wasn't a good Christian, are totally behind him. The fact that that came as a shock to these people is shocking to me. Well, Jeremy Peters, who is often on Morning Joe, and you actually wrote about uh, him this week because he was I the did. one who said both sides are being mean and, and yes. partisan. And I don't know how we're going to do it. You know, they're losing that whole when we go low. When they go low, we go high. They're not doing that anymore on the Democratic side. No, we're not. Side. No, we're not, Jeremy. Well, we're really guess not. Guess what? You can't depend on yeah. us to be nice, and we're going to punch back, and we're going to win. And mm-hmm. because you tried to take away our health insurance, and that we take that very right. personally. And so, uh, but Jeremy Peters is also kind of the conservative expert who spe- right. says things the way Morning Joe wants them to be said. Okay, but he was on uh, a day later than than the thing you wrote about talking about uh-huh. evangelicals and saying, look, the, the way the evangelicals are supporting Trump is completely transactional. Mm-hmm. They look the other way on all the shit he's doing and right. he gives them everything they want. He gives them right. particularly moving the Israeli ambassadorship to Jerusalem. That is like, giving them a ticket to heaven and they will never turn away from that. Right. Um, and judges. And judges and mm-hmm. uh, turning back 
uh, pro gay and pro trans policies and yeah. turning, you know, giving uh, Mike Pence control the keys to the city in terms of whatever you want to do, Mike, in terms of tax policy. Churches can now get involved in politics and not have the IRS down their neck. Uh, the, ev- everything they want, they're getting from this president. Yeah. That's so, right. Uh, and it's it is com- they totally do understand that they are trading, accepting Donald Trump's evil, <laughs> something they would never accept from anybody else. But he's giving them he's saying, look the other way on that and I will give you everything you want politically. And so it's right. it's he, callous. It's uh, cold hearted. It they'll they're going to go to hell for it, in my opinion. And they don't Look care. Look out. Yep. If only there was some, I don't know, story in the Bible <laughs> about being taken to a high place and shown the kingdoms yeah, of the earth. Yeah. And being say, all this can be yours. Yep. If you only bow down all and worship have, me. Yeah. All you have to do is bow down and worship me. If only there was some parallel that was written in the book, they're always carrying around and thumping in front of people like uh-huh. us and claiming to be morally superior to everyone else on the face yep. of the earth that spoke to this exact issue. Then and then, and then that that the person that they believe is God on earth says, "Get thee mm-hmm. behind me, Satan." <laughs> yes. Yeah, which that is part? which is Old Testament speak for "Go fuck yeah. yourself." Yeah, yeah. And I would rather die on a cross than ever do anything like right. that. You can take all of Caesar's shit and give it to Caesar because it has nothing to do with what we're we're supposed to be doing here in the mm-hmm. world. Mm-hmm. That's what these people believe are supposed to believe. That is literally what they believe that the Bible is the literal and inerrant word of God, which it is not. It's emphatically not. If you studied actual textual analysis of literature for five minutes, you know that this is not true, but they believe it. This is their own standard and they are gleefully uh, shredding, shitting all over any concept of morality or moral standards or a, a moral relativity, which they always used to hate when liberals did it uh, in exchange for stuff. Yep. And that is the, and, and they are going, and here's the thing, they're going to get away with it yep. again because they've gotten away with it before, unless this time they're stopped, unless this time we, we cold cock. Well, it, it does give um, me hope for the post Trump future that they are trying to build a lifeboat, uh, that uh-huh. there is a post Trump future. There are days when I feel as though there isn't. Uh, but, uh, the fact that Morning Joe is trying to pretend that they were never part of this uh, yes. and, and, and saying, saying so, so on camera, camera uh, and in a, in a perverted <laughs> way friend. gives me hope. Oh, they think that there's a post-Trump where they they have to and build if, a lifeboat to survive and, and lie about their past. Uh, we can get there, but we got to burn those lifeboats. You, you cannot and watching- allow the Republican Party to continue as as having a say in our healthcare decisions, in, in our in aging anything. policy, in our tax policy, their policies are terrible. It's austerity for Which, you and tax cuts for billionaires. That's their policy, and it's not. It doesn't work. It's failed. If you get a chance to see, and if you get a chance to see uh, uh, Sarah Kenzior, oh, she was amazing this week on her book tour. On on more, they, they had to invite her on yeah. Morning Joe because she won awards and she's yeah. amazing. Uh, but they sat there in a little semicircle around her and basically begged her not to say that they were right. complicit in the oh, rise and, of Donald and Trump. They he, said she had expertise and she was so good and everyone should buy this far, book and isn't it great? And everyone around this table knew that Donald Trump was terrible. And she went, yeah, sure you did. <laughs> you know, she makes no. this <laughs> statement. Of, yeah, I know you do. Or something like that. It's just really uh-huh. funny. She's Which laughing is- through her. But she had, she had, uh, been read the rule book, you know, that you're not yes. going to call yeah. out Meek and Joe and they will promote your book. <laughs> and that's the trend. Yeah. And that is transactional, as as you, you know, as long as you don't go, as long as, it, and, and she sat there and talked about, she did say, yeah, but she, you, you kind of have to examine how right. we got you to You have this to place. examine so that Donald say, Trump started his campaign with racism and that the media right. allowed him to continue after that. And, and she did say and, that. Yeah. 
And those yeah. seeds hit a very they fertile did. ground that was there long, long before Donald Trump ever yeah. showed up. And that's when everybody on the panel got real giggly and oh, friendly. And you know what? And, and, and also started and, bringing up Jonah Goldberg's book, which is our, our third right. oh. reboot. We have no, we have no Legion well, is our second reboot, right? What? Uh, our, our, no, our, our second reboot is actually Lost oh, in Space. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I don't have it in our notes, but uh, Lost in Space uh, is a damn mm-hmm. good show. That's all I'll say. Uh, and, but it, I'm, we're going through the list like, wait a minute. Um, Queer Eye for the Straight Guy is a really adult reboot of mm-hmm. a silly show. A, a fine show, but a silly show. For, this was a really kind of adult, serious, interesting, um, um, substantive yep. exchange. Um, Lost in Space is doing to old Lost in Space, the Dr. Smith and Will Robinson and Robot Comedy Hour. Uh, what Battlestar Galactica did to Battlestar Galactica mm-hmm. in the 1980s. Mm-hmm. It's actually taking the beats of the original show, the actual, you know, here are the ma- main characters and here's the sort of the, the spine of the plot and making a really interesting, tightly written, very good adult drama mm-hmm. out of it. Um, and I got to say, way to go. I never, why, why the hell would you reboot Lost in Space? They did that shitty movie in the 90s that fell apart. It was It was with Matt... What's his name? Uh, as as Don Smith, it it, it was or uh, Don, uh, whatever his name mm-hmm. was, Major Don. It was a terrible movie, um, and it didn't work. This one works really well. well. And they've got a budget, and for so every episode would, they've got a big budget. Yeah. So, and it does remind me a lot of third, Battlestar Galactica. Yeah, it does. It really does. I, I will not spoil it, other than to say, uh, Doctor Smith is Gaius yeah. Baltar. Yeah. Um, they figured out how to make a villain in a way that that fits. It isn't mm-hmm. a cartoon mm-hmm. character, um, and that you can actually believe that there there are coincidences, which I forgive them. But the science, all lo- other than flying faster than light, which no one believes, is not possible. But the the actual mechanics of the show are very very realistic, and um. I just like the whole thing. I'm very, I'm, I'm thrilled that they actually took science fiction seriously and put together a show based on an old kitty show, basically, uh, that actually uh, does a good job. That's the second reboot. The third reboot, the third reboot mm-hmm. is Jonah Goldberg's book. Mm-hmm. It's called The Suicide of the West, uh, and it has been promoted endlessly on Morning Joe. It is, it, it's, it's a lifeboat it's handbook. About everywhere. <laughs> the Republican it's, lifeboat and, handbook, and is, folks. That's what it is. We're going to... We're going to circle back and talk about Legion, but I I do want to talk about Jonah Goldberg's book for this reason. Mm -hmm. This is really Mm -hmm. important. I'm going to stake my paltry professional reputation on the fact that this is a very big deal. And I'll tell you, and I'm going to tell you why. Um, Jonah Goldberg's book is called The Suicide of the West. His last book was The Tyranny of the Cliches, for which he got a million dollar advance. Attorney of the, the book before that that everyone remembers mm-hmm. is Liberal Fascism, uh, which was Liberals are Fascists. The secret li- history of liberalism is the, is the history of fascism, which is just bullshit on every single level. Keith Olbermann, among many, many, many other people, tore it apart on the air, laughed the guy off the stage. It doesn't matter. Right. Jonah Goldberg's not going anywhere because Jonah Goldberg is, is a weekly standard writer. He's wired into the wingnut welfare system through his family and through everyone he knows. Well, He's and wingnut welfare, anywhere. let's be clear. So it, uh, yeah. Conservative people buy books that reinforce their worldview. Yes. It, they buy books more yes. than they <laughs> consume other mass media. And so there, there is a reason yes. why Random House and these other big publishing houses have conservative imprints to publish yes, Ann do. Coulter, to publish Jonah Goldberg, to publish these folks and give them advances, give them uh, publicity contracts, get them on Morning Joe, get them on NBC, you know, uh, Mrs. Greenspan's interviewing them. It's it's a big deal yep. because there's money in it. And it's money in it because there is and, an and, audience that will go out and pay for the hardcover book to have it on their shelves, just like the Bible. It reinforces my worldview, therefore I own it. There's also, there are people who will buy, there, there are organizations mm-hmm. that will mm-hmm. buy in bulk right. 
and give it away for a penny, right. give it away for nothing as a premium, just right. to right. move it up the bestseller list. And while these people are not writing books, they're working for conservative organizations that are mm -hmm. massively well-funded mm -hmm. to do this every day. So what we mean by wingnut welfare is, is a broad spectrum of money that's always made available to every dingus who's willing to punctuate a sentence on behalf of, of the right mm -hmm. so that they mm -hmm. never miss a meal. It's, it's, a, it's a straight up, yep. uh, in Chicago, yep. we called it clout. Mm -hmm. um, it was a straight up trade. It was, I will be loyal to you in exchange right. for job security. And if you are a conservative writer above a certain threshold, they will always find you, even on MSNBC. There's no reason on God's earth why Hugh Hewitt should have a, a microphone and a camera pointed at him ever. He's horrible. But there's some arrangement somewhere Way between upstairs. somebody and somebody right. else that says Hugh Hewitt, right. Hugh Hewitt never goes to that work. David Brooks will have a job for life. John Podhoretz gets to come on uh, on MSNBC. Bill Crystal gets to have his own magazine, plus be on MSNBC, plus on NBC, plus CNN. Anywhere Bill Crystal wants to appear, mm -hmm. he gets paid appearances no mm -hmm. matter what. And nobody asks any questions. There are, there has to be, by virtue of simple third grade deduction, an enormous amount of money being poured into the system to keep these assholes propped up and funded. That's really important. Because you and I do this part time mm -hmm. between other jobs mm -hmm. as much as we can, but these people yep. are sitting on a fucking yep. pile of money and they have the time, therefore, to go off and yep. write shitty books. And then those shitty books are blurbed by a whole column David Brooks wrote a on whole the, column how wonderful this book is the, and how he's the, the future of conservative book. thought in America. It's, it's, yep. It's it's gonna be mm -hmm. it's it's yeah. gonna be debate shifting, blue gal. It's epic. Brad Thor, it's it reviewed it. Who's a wingnut welfare queen? John Podhoritz reviewed it on Amazon. He runs Commentary Magazine. You might have seen him, which is a right wing magazine, and you see him every third day on MSNBC. Who is being silenced? Kevin Williamson, Strickland. you know, anti woman, being silenced by by virtue of the fact that he only gets columns in Commentary and the Wall Street Journal and the Washington Post and in the Weekly Standard. And John Podhortz hired him at the Commentary Magazine, has also reviewed mm -hmm. Jonah Goldberg's book as awesome. A noted conservative phrenologist mm -hmm. and racist, Charles Murray, thinks this is a great book. Stephen Hayes, editor-in-chief of the Weekly Standard, Fox News host, and his most uh, famous book, his own book, was called Connections, which is all about <laughs> how, how Iraq definitely had weapons of mass destruction. And Al-Qaeda was certainly <laughs> in cahoots with Saddam Hussein. And I'm sure it's available in some bargain bin somewhere. But Stephen Hayes has never been without a job. He loves Jonah Goldsberg. So it's blur. It's, it's an entirely self-contained universe funded by okay. crackpot billionaire money, which we do right. not have on the right, on the left. Here's the important part. The reason Jonah Goldberg's book is being held up as a model is because it is an attempt by that small group of people, the never Trump people, the people who are better than the mob, who ran the Republican Party, who ran the conservative movement, who turned it into a vehicle that Donald Trump could hijack. They need to save their asses. They have no constituency outside of each other. They certainly can't join the liberal movement and, and admit they've been wrong all these years. What, what do they have? They have control of the microphones. They have control of the cameras. They mm -hmm. have control of printing presses. And they have a shitload of money. And they are building themselves a lifeboat. And this book is. is the it mast is. on the lifeboat. This is, this is the one they can all huddle behind and say, see, conservatism really is a serious intellectual pursuit. But here's the problem. I don't have a copy of the book yet. I just looked at the table of contents. But it looks an awful lot like that this is a reboot of Ayn Rand's Capitalism, the mm -hmm. Unknown Ideal mm -hmm. from 1960-something. A 50-year-old book on capitalism and why capitalism is – it is the soft reboot of Capitalism, the Unknown Ideal with right. dick jokes right. that nobody asked for. And that's the important thing. Without any other – because conservatism has failed. Republicanism has failed. There has been an awakening in this country with the election of Donald Trump to realize your ideas, Republican Party, are yes. terrible. They hurt people. And we're not going to tolerate them yes. anymore. And it's got everyone running scared mm -hmm. because if we don't – if we can't – if the only people we can fool are the rubes and we can't get uh, 
disinterested college students to just stay home on election day because they realize how important it is to get out and vote against you because of the NRA. And they've awoken to that. Mm -hmm. You're in huge trouble. (laughs) That's right. So so what did the what did the Republicans do last time they faced an existential crisis, which was the end of the Bush administration? They, they, they invented the Tea Party. They invented a Tea Party. They invented a lifeboat for the morons. They invented mm-hmm. a lifeboat, a cheap and easy. All it required was buying a tricorn hat, a Gadsden flag, and swearing by the law on the lives of your children. You never heard of George Bush, right? And, and, and they what? had a shit ton of money, as they you did. said. They had a shit ton uh, of coke money. Fox money, Glenn Beck money. Well, they Glenn Beck of- was paid a million dollars to promote. We don't. I didn't realize this until this year. Was paid a million dollars by Dick Army mm-hmm. to promote the Tea Party movement, and that's why Tea Party folks had, thank God for Glenn Beck signs all over the place. Yeah, the nine twelve nine twelve movement of we just want to get back together again, the way we all were the day after nine eleven. Well, yeah, so that's before sa- Bush fucked everything up. That's right. right? And so, so to save themselves, right. to save themselves, the, they invented a, a, a Bush off mm-hmm. machine, which I've written about a million times, which was this magic machine that made it so that you never really supported George Bush. The past never happened. The past did not exist. You Those Bush Cheney bumper stickers on your car, who knows who put them there? I can't say why. The, all the liberal friends that you called stupid and French loving and a terrorist lover all those years because they didn't support George Bush. Uh, we didn't forget what you did, but you suddenly have no memory of any of that shit. You're a brand new party. You're a tea party. You're an independent. You're a conservative. You're certainly not a Republican, certainly not a Bush Republican. That <laughs> That is the tool that is being applied now to the elite, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. to the brain cast of the Republican Party and conservative movement, to the Jonah Goldbergs and Michael Gerson's and Brett Stevens and David Brooks's and all the rest of these fuckers who rode this gravy train into the ground. They need to save themselves now. So what is their common story? The common story they all are, are tell in every fucking column they write every time they're on camera that Donald Trump came down the escalator two years ago. Before that, everything was fine. Mm-hmm. We had nothing to do with it. He showed up. He could, he corrupted them with his magic and sorceling green lantern powers and turned our good movement, our good conservatism into this monstrous hellscape that have nothing to do with us. It wasn't us. We were never there. He has nothing to, it's not true. It's not Republicanism. It's Trumpism. That's right. And that is the lie that the elites are selling to the country and to themselves. That it wasn't this is this is Joe Scarborough's bread and butter, which is why no one is allowed to tell him to his face that he's a fucking liar. And that's what scares the shit out of me because they really do control the yeah, cameras. Yeah. They really do control the, the printing presses. They really have the wherewithal to let Jonah Goldberg write a shitty reboot of a 50-year-old book, declare it to be the new breakthrough in conservative thinking that, by the way, gets us all the fuck off the hook. Who does Jonah Goldberg blame for the, 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 the way things are going? Based on the table of contents and the interviews I've seen, it's all tribalism, Blue Gal. Tribalism. It's all tribalism. It's the anger and, and the extremes on both sides, Blue Gal. Well, that's mm-hmm. music to David Brooks's fucking ears. So that's that's yeah. their salvation. That will be their salvation. If they can get away with lying about the history of the Republican Party, the history of conservatism, and when the phenomena started that led to Donald Trump began, if they can get away with saying it was two years ago rather than 30 years ago or 40 years ago, they will get away with it again. And what will happen after that? What will happen? These same fuckers will reseed the same imbeciles with the same ideas, and they'll come up with someone who's slightly smarter than Donald Trump, who doesn't tweet as often. They'll get someone right. same, I don't know, right. Marco Rubio, who can do exactly the kind of damage that Donald Trump has been doing, but do it with a smile on his face and a more acceptable public presence, and will be fucked if that happens. That's why yeah. this is important. This is the vanguard of the new of this is the rear guard action. And if they if they lose this, they lose everything. If they win this, they win everything. That's why I think it's terribly important. So that's why I'm up on my and it's, on ter- it's terribly important be- to focus in on this kind of lifeboat building, right. and and cut it off at every opportunity mm-hmm. that you you that Republican ideas are terrible. Mm-hmm. That is re- this is not Trumpism. It didn't start with the escalator and. The Republican establishment made a huge mistake. They allowed Jeb Bush to represent them. 
Yeah, that was. And that was that reminded the Rubes <laughs> that they had voted for Jeb George Bush, ooh, ooh. and they needed to forget that. Mm -hmm. And Donald Trump at the you and I, you actually applauded Donald Trump at the debate. I did. Where he said Bush didn't keep us safe. Yep. You know this. There was this incredibly subversive moment where Donald Trump called out the Bush regime. Mm -hmm. and said you didn't keep us safe. Your brother didn't keep us safe. And it wasn't just safe from 9-11. That's what got me I mean, thinking about that mm -hmm. was you didn't keep us safe from ourselves. You didn't keep us safe from believing that we were a, a success. You remind us, Jeb Bush reminds us that we were a failure, right. that we failed, that we failed in the economy. We, lot, we were lied into war and that we were an embarrassment and that liberals the laughed. Republican party and liberals laughed at us and they were right. Mm -hmm. And we don't need to be reminded of that. And so as much as anything, Donald Trump was the ultimate Bush off machine, he right? Was. Oh, we don't want the elites in Washington to run things. He's not a politician. What they meant is he's not a Bush regime mm -hmm. establishment Republican, which we cannot tolerate anymore because they failed and made us look ridiculous. And, and now, this, is, this is why <laughs> Jonah... that's the irony, of course, is who's making them look ridiculous again is Donald Trump. Well, and this is why Jonah Goldberg is on NPR yeah. and Morning yeah. Joe and yeah. on The Daily Show yes, on, in right. venue after venue after venue where no one asks him anything but softball questions. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody yeah. pushes him at all because, and it takes, believe me, it takes a shitload of money to push this yeah. jerk whose last famous book is called Liberal Fascism out there in a, in, a, in a way that no one asks him, well, if tribalism is bad, why the fuck did you write a book called Liberal Fascism? Right, right, um, right. Because weren't you like one of the leaders of the pack? Weren't you one of the worst fuck goat fucking Jonah Goldberg? Yeah. Weren't you one of the worst offenders of this? But we can't we can't allow the past to to screw up our lifeboat building. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so that's how I hate to say it. That's how wide the conspiracy is. That's yeah. how that's yeah. what money yeah. gets you. Yeah. Money gets you this kind of protection. But here's the thing. That's all they have. Yes. They don't have right. a They don't have a, an intellectual movement. They got nothing. They got a couple thousand writers and producers and and uh, uh, white paper people and think tank people with a billion, billion dollars behind them. But they have a glass jaw because these people could not stand up for 30 seconds in an actual debate over how we got to where we are. That's why they protect themselves and wall themselves off behind a, a, a giant wall of money. And that's why mm -hmm. they won't come out and debate people like us because we would destroy them. Mm -hmm. And they know mm -hmm. it. This is why teachers scare the hell out of them. This is why right. Black right. Lives Matter scare the hell out of them. This is right. why the blue wave. This is why women in pussy hats. This is why the, the anti-gun movement, the Me Too movement scares the shit out of them. Because yeah. those are people who do not listen to them and do not care about Jonah Goldberg's book. Right. And don't really care and draw no distinction between Donald Trump and the assholes at Red State who are having a, a, a pillow fight over who's slightly less fascist than the other. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And and. The women who are running things and the college students and yes, the high yes. school students Damn who right. are doing these marches are so far underneath them. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is like an elephant and a mouse, right? They and never saw it coming. They, they never, never saw it saw coming. Saw yeah. But the organization that's going on on the ground, and I hope people are, who are listening to me are are participating in that. I realize we're now at this kind of lull, which is just after many primaries yeah. and before the general election starts to swing into action, probably in August. But uh, you need to be making postcards for your Democratic uh, congressional candidate. You need to find out who your Democratic congressional candidate is. Mm -hmm. If you're a phone person, you can be making phone calls from home. They'll help you make phone calls from home. Uh, mm -hmm. We need to, it's turnout, turnout, turnout. We need to get people to the polls. I'm going to be doing that and I'm going, you know, make a difference. And that all happens so far beneath the purview right. of Morning Joe that looks at poll numbers and doesn't see the percentage of voters that come out because someone at the hair salon talked about it or someone got a postcard or someone's aunt called them or someone went to church and said, you know, I just am worried about my grandmother in the nursing home and she's on Medicaid and she needs Medicaid to stay in the nursing home. And what am I going to do if they cut that? 
Mm -hmm. And we all know who they is. Yes, we Everybody do. knows who they is. You if, sure? And they're the ones who yeah. are sitting real quiet on their hands these yep, days, yep. trying not to attract attention to themselves because everything we told you was going to happen is happening now. And now they're being real. Now they talk about sports a lot. Yeah. Sports and country music and so forth. And, and country music. And <laughs> even, even Hugh Hewitt today is all about the Cleveland Browns. He's got 40 right. tweets about the NFL draft. That's what he's it's talking football. about. You want to talk um, about Donald Trump? On uh, Fox and Friends. Now, now here's the thing I realized. Yeah. Um, and we did this on purpose. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, we short-sheeted a little bit on the news roundup. We'll do a quick news roundup now. Right. Uh, and we, because... You notice we haven't talked about Donald Trump on <laughs> Fox and no, Friends yet. <laughs> no, because everybody else is. Yeah. Because we, we really do think a lot about this show when we're not talking. And mm -hmm. this really is sort of a microphone on a conversation that we're having all the time anyway. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. we love each other, we're crazy about each other, and this is one of the things that are, that we deeply care about. But um, the thing I think we do best is give people context for what they're seeing. Yeah, yeah. give them a vocabulary and a context, and sort of a a, a, a way to 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 a microscope and a telescope to make sense of what's near and what's far away, and what's important and what's not important. And you can hold your thumb up and block out the moon doesn't mean your thumb's bigger than the moon. Right, right. So the 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 news roundup is important, but let's face it, everybody, Bazooka Joe is going to be having cartoons about Donald Trump going crazy pants on Fox next right, week. Right. So there'll be right. no dearth of commentary on that. We're, we're going to talk about it. We'll talk about it right now. But we're doing this on purpose because we do want to focus on what we do better than anyone else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Actualize things and get, make it real for people. And let you live guys know you're not live. alone in your concern, yep. your passion and worry and nervousness about the future. And hope for and the future and give you yeah. a vocabulary for hope for the future because I need it. I need to yep. hear it. And, uh, you know, it's depressing if you don't hold on to what can I do. And that's why, you know, there are days when after I've written about politics for eight hours, I just have to sit and knit cancer patient shawls because that makes a difference. Um, this postcard project, just postcards to voters. If you Google that, you can see there's all these opportunities and instructions on how to how to make postcards for voters. Um, that's something that I can do that will make a small difference and make the world a better place by getting rid of Republican policies. I'm going to keep saying it. Republican policies are terrible. <laughs> They're terrible. They hurt and people, people who believe in them are terrible. Well, there aren't any policies. They're just well, getting rid of everything and that's that what makes us great. infuriates me more than anything else is that the meme of the lifeboat builders is, yeah, but Democrats don't have any policies except for hating Trump. Oh, fuck you. <laughs> fuck you. Fuck you. That's just the cherry on well, top, guys. And, and who – I just – if I had an opportunity to reply to that morning, Joe, it would be – explain to me what the Republican policy is on health insurance. What is your mm -hmm. policy? Is your policy is I don't get any? Is that your policy? Because that's not acceptable. And that's not acceptable to most voters. Anyway. Well, and and the, the it's like saying that Democrats have no policy on public housing. They just hate people who burn down public housing. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah we, we do. do. Yes, we do. <laughs> It exists. It's imperfect. We'd like to improve it, but we'd like to build on what is out there now. You people want to burn it all down. Yes, we really do hate people reason. who want to burn down yeah. public housing. We really hate that. Yes, we do. Right. We really do. <laughs> and and I'm not going to make. And it's not because we they. It's because of what they do. If they just sat at home yeah. and jerked off to guns and ammo and didn't go out and try to destroy this country. That'd be mm -hmm. fine. It's a free country. But you stepped outside into the public policy arena and you're wrecking everything that's good about this country and you're, bu you're butt scooting your shitty racist attitude all over everything that, that makes us kind and decent as human beings. And we're going to stop you. Yep. And if we can put you back in the sewer from, from whence you came and make you harmless again, that's what I'd like to do. But your policies have to stop. And – and and if that is if that means it sounds like I hate you, it's only because I hate everything. About I hate your you. policies. <laughs> mm -hmm. All, All of them. them. Yep. All of them. And I hate the fact that you cling on to them, not because you like them, not because they do any good, not because they pass basic muster, but because they make my yep. wife cry. Yep. That's the only yep. reason you have to, you assholes do shit is because it makes liberals angry. That's right. And that and spite and ignorance is no way to run a goddamn and, country. And you hurt yourself when you do that. 
I had some, I think I've said this before, but I had someone uh, on Twitter talking from the perspective of uh, it was, it was right after Charlottesville and you see how liberals hate Nazis, but you know, liberals don't want Nazis to have healthcare. And I went, Oh yes, I do. Some Nazi might cough on my kid. I want you to have the best health insurance. And especially I want Nazis to have all their shots. Because yes. if you cop on my kid, it it's might got... rub off somehow. Yeah. Right. No, I want them to be healthy and clean and and have a minimum basic yeah. income. Yeah. Yeah. I want them to have job security. I want them you know to have health care. They... <laughs> you know why? Because honestly, I I I, I want to save yep. their souls. Yeah. Honestly, I really do believe that these people have have sold their soul to to a monstrously evil thing, and. Part of the fallout of the lie that they that this the the awful forces that they've sold themselves to part of the fallout is destroying my family and my neighborhood and my state yeah, and my country, yeah. and that needs to stop. And since we can't reason with them, and we can't get them to accept basic math, and we can't even get them to acknowledge shit they said yesterday that they believe, there's nothing to do but drive them out of office. Believe me, we tried sugar and cookies, and that didn't work. That was called the <laughs> Obama administration, and that didn't work. So we're going to try something else. Drip glass. Yeah, Blue Gal. Drip glass. We're at an hour. Let's, let's blitz through a little bit of news. Just pick some stuff you like All to right. talk about. You go ahead and you go ahead and read well, it. Well, everyone knows Donald Trump went nuts on Fox and Friends uh, to the point where they yeah. had to tell him to be quiet. And we're out of time, Mr. President, which nobody does unless you know this is your drunk well, father, uncle at the table rambling on and you can't leave for some reason, you know, you can't get up or, or there'll be trouble. And in the process. And one of our correspondents wrote to us uh-huh. and said that he seriously thinks that maybe he took too many stimulants that morning. Yeah. You know, that is a possibility. Right. He gets like three hours of sleep and probably wakes up to something, you know, no dose or whatever. Yeah. And you take too much of that and you ramble. And he did. He doesn't wake up to Melania, uh-huh. that's for sure. On her birthday. Uh, hey. <laughs> on my birthday, yeah. I especially want you to leave me alone an extra hour. <laughs> and and he, uh, he managed to set fire to his own legal defense during his mad mm-hmm. ramble, which at, mm-hmm. at, in real time, people in court that day arguing said, wait a minute. <laughs> what did he say? Yeah. Oh, get this we shit don't down. need to do nothing except mention what he said on, on TV. Yes. Um, federal prosecutors seized as many as 16 cell phones. Burner phones, as you uh, better call Saul fans know them, uh, during the raids on Michael Cohen's office, home, and hotel rooms. So that's kind of that's kind of fun. Michael Cohen will plead the fifth in a lawsuit filed against Trump by Stormy Daniels. Now let's all remember what Donald Trump said about people who plead the fifth. Blue gal. They're in the mob. They're in the mob. They're they're not mm-hmm. to be trusted. Who pleads? Who? What innocent person would plead the fifth? And he said it over and over and over again. I know the fact that he says shit on film. Doesn't matter to the morons who are out there uh, who do nothing but watch Fox News. Because this this week, believe it or not, as we do sometimes, we flipped over to Fox News to watch the latest breaking news at MC13. Um, you know, <laughs> MS13. MS13. Yes. Uh, yes. MSNBC13. I can't keep track. Suffice it to say, it is hilarious to, to tune in and watch the alternate universe because the worst news gets for Trump in the real world, the more – crazy ass tangential has nothing to do with anything uh pandas having sex news goes on at fox it is like criminology in that sense it is like and drift class i thought it was particularly telling on hannity last night mm -hmm. that the trump interview with fox and friends they didn't show the fox and friends hosts and their faces they just showed a picture of donald trump and his audio very carefully clipped to try to make him sound sane but there were no pictures of the dead-eyed panic look in steve ducey's face Uh, according to uh donald trump was rambling yeah according to soviet history you you knew that the the uh the premiere was dead when 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 pravda started playing state tv started playing nothing but somber music for four days yep Yep. We're not going to say he's dead, but we're going to let you. Know. So you know things are going bad when Tucker Carlson is talking about panda sex. Right. Uh, right. Things are in the real world are going horribly wrong, and they've been going horribly wrong for a long time. Um, Ronnie Ronnie Jackson, you know, uh, Doctor Feelgood, uh, Candyman, uh, committed what I believe is called physician assisted career suicide. He did uh, on camera in front of a bunch of people, and, and Fox that's a real thing. And Fox Business are blaming Democrats because he was an Obama. Course. doctor as it, well he put Obama's life at risk while he was drunk on the job yes he did 
Uh, um, Donald Trump is apparently extremely opposed uh, suddenly to g sitting down with Robert Mueller to have an interview. Well, Rudy Giuliani and, told him how bad right. that would be, and he Remember, believed say, Rudy Giuliani. So, ex except of course, six months ago he was anxious to do it. Right now, champion of the bet. Let's do it. Let's do it. Yeah. Let's do it. Uh, this one jumped out at me today. This one really got that to, to a lot of people. Yeah. Uh, Paul Ryan fired the House chaplain after the House chaplain offered a prayer for the poor and tax cuts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, the House chaplain, Patrick Conroy, wrote to Paul Ryan, as you have requested, I hereby offer my resignation as yep. the 60th chaplain of the United States House of Representatives. Mm -hmm. That's some that's some absolutely. Well, it's it's Soviet uh, shit. Paul Ryan, a cafeteria Catholic. Yeah. And what he doesn't realize is that this Pope Francis wave of priests doesn't want to yeah. hear it, doesn't no. want to hear about his tax cuts for billionaires. Nope. Um, this week, speaking of abusers who shouldn't be anywhere near anything, uh, the FBI said it told the White House about allegations of spousal abuse by Robert Porter, you know, wife beater Rob Porter, mm -hmm. in March of 2017, yep. which flatly contradicts what the Obama or the Trump administration has been saying all along because they just lie all the time about everything. Um, I like the way you wrote the next four of them. Can I just read them off real quick? Sure. Please well, do. Scott Pruitt is amazing. Solid, unrepentant corruption. Mick Mulvaney is amazing. <laughs> he only listens to bankers and lobbyists who pay him. And he said so out loud. And he also has told people that uh, the best thing they can do to help destroy the bureau that he now oversees is to give, give money. money. Uh, yeah. Ben Carson is amazing. He wants to triple rent increase, do triple rent increases for low-income Americans uh, on Section 8, which Section 8 doesn't even begin to cover the need for that people have for affordable housing. Okay. John Bolton is amazing. Uh, he, he, he used to chair up till a month ago, up until a month ago. Institute, anti-Muslim propaganda right. schlock house, which was by the way, a 501 C3. Of course uh, it was. Rand Paul is amazing. <laughs> he ran away from his opposition to Mark, Mark Pompeo. Mike Pompeo, yes, he swore. He swore on a, on a stack of copies of Atlas Shrugged, which he values more than life itself. He would never, ever, ever vote for Mike Pompeo. Then he voted for Mike Pompeo because Rand Paul runs away from everything. Rand Paul uh, has principles, and then he abandons them and and runs in the opposite direction, which is a. But he gets the camera on him while he's running he away. That's the that's the whole deal. Uh, North and South Korea may have ended the Korean War, which means that Donald Trump is being robbed of the Nobel Peace God Prize, damn. according to conservatives. Damn, damn you. Damn. <laughs> you know, and this is, this, I mean, this, uh, separate and apart from everything else, this could be amazing, wonderful news. It also could be a fucking yep. ruse, and it also could be a, a incredibly perilous. It also could be really dangerous. I don't know. I don't know enough about anything to do with the subject, but I do know seeing. Well, we do uh, know that the North Koreans uh, nuclear missile site collapse. Yeah, they're done with it. They're done with it. And so they don't have that anymore. And I think it's possible that Kim Jong un decided, well, if we don't have that, then we need food. Right. Well and, and once you've made uh, ten cars and parked them in the garage, you yeah, can give up yeah. your car making capacity because you've already got the guy sure. cars. Right. Um, right. And, uh, we'll see what happens. I don't I don't hold out any hope for Kim Jong un to all of a sudden become a human rights advocate. Maybe the honorable Kim Jong-un? Yeah. <laughs> he was getting lots of attention, which is what he wanted. Yeah. And uh, if we don't hold, the, and we won't, I mean, we just won't, because Donald Trump's got to get a Nobel Peace Prize. Right. That's the point. Uh, but if we don't uh, stay awake to the human rights abuses uh, of the North Korean government, uh we might as well just hang it up as a country. I, the United States doesn't stand for anything anymore. Well, and speaking of that, a federal judge has told the Trump administration they have to start accepting new DACA applications. So, yep. ha ha, fuck you. Because, because this policy affects people right. and there's no reason for it other than racism. Right. And the, the judge in, judges in the case looked at this case and said there was no reason for this. Except for the race, they didn't say be, except for the racism of the Republican Party. They just said there's no reason to affect people's lives this way. The government does not have a legitimate argument for why they are stopping it. Uh, so there you go. 
uh, around 80% of Americans say they see no tax cut yeah. in uh, in their paychecks at all. Uh, yeah. Uh, want- and gas prices are going up. It's the summertime coming. Yeah, it went up for uh, me. And your health insurance is is gone. Right. So it's taken them all the money that you have, it, as it is for us. So uh, uh, I want a, a lyric that uh, Middle Child has been quoting for a while. I hope it's a lyric. Oh. Uh, President Emmanuel Macron was here for a good time, but not for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> he got everything he wanted. All he had to do was learn how to, you know, let the alpha male groom him in public. Yeah. And- well, he didn't oh, get everything he wanted because uh, P- Pompeo this morning announced that we're getting out of the Rand deal. So, yeah. shiv in the back, as my colleague at Chris and Liars said. And here's you a- fly away, we're, we'll just we'll just stab you. Yep. Uh, and and a funny story, true story. A convicted felon, monstrous human being, and coal asshole Don Blankenship is running his U.S. Senate campaign for West Virginia while living in his two and a half million dollar villa in Nevada. Because well, that, that really ought to be a campaign issue. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, assuming those people give a shit, it should be. Yeah. But I'm not making those assumptions right now. Um, uh, during Barbara Bush's funeral, Trump tweeted about the DNC's lawsuit over hacked emails, accused James Comey of leaking classified memos, and called Jeff Sessions Mr. Magoo and Rod Rosenstein Mr. Peepers. Also, Melania Trump smiled for the first time in memory. Certainly his first time as first lady. She, she smiled, smiled at Barack Obama. Barack Obama. Oh, you know, there was hell to pay. Um, Maybe that's why the, she didn't get a birthday present. Yeah. Yeah. Here's your present. Bitch. <laughs> um, and in March, the RNC spent nearly a quarter of a million dollars at Mar-a-Lago. One month, quarter million dollars funneled into Donald Trump's pockets. How much has, cool. has Joe Scarborough spent at Mar-a-Lago in the past five years? No. Million. He's been Christmas. He's been there for three Christmases, yeah. I think. Uh, not twenty, not 2017, but 2016, 2015, and I believe 2014. Mm-hmm. He and his kids, that was, that was their Christmas trip in Mar-a-Lago. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. This was the this was the week that Bill Cosby was finally convicted. Yep. And one, this is the week with one woman out of yeah. how many? But that was the one where the 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 timing was, of the case was correct that they could prosecute. Uh, I would like to end with some shocking news. Okay. Uh, shockingly, it wasn't economic anxiety after all. <laughs> uh, turns out, people voted for Trump because they were worried about losing their social yeah. status, specifically white. Christian and male voters feared their social status was threatened and that Trump would restore it. Trump, Trump will make America, so not, meaning them, great them. again. Literally. Yeah, That's again. why white that again. statement. Well, mm-hmm. making them great again, making their worldview in charge. And part of it is fear of death. You know, you and I talked yeah. about that, that we're, they're 60 and you and I are pushing 60 and uh you know you're not you're not young anymore and all of a sudden america all the tv commercials have uh mixed marriages and you know the gays got their parade where's my military parade right where's my parade to make me feel strong and powerful and trump was promised them that and i i still think that this drain the swamp thing uh is is sort of the wedge uh Get, I I feel still the hope that we can get together with our conservative brethren with boots on the ground yeah. on the issue of get the money out of I, politics. I couldn't agree more. When you put that on the ballot and you get it passed, you will get it passed with Republican votes as well. I, I, th- I think that should be the case. I don't know if it ever will be, but it certainly should be. And it, it should be one of those things that we, that and Veterans Affairs should be the sort yeah. of thing that, no, you know, it, it, it has to stop. Because it's just killing everything. Yeah. Whatever. And privatizing veterans veterans hospitals is just a stupid idea. Yep. Yeah. Each week, we post to our Facebook page and website an internet kitty sent in by you, the listeners. This week's internet kitty is Phaedra. Phaedra used to be an angry feral cat, but is now a fluffy, goofy, spoiled princess. Yay. Yay. You can send your internet kitty to us at our email address, proleftpodcast at gmail.com, or you can also write to both of us. Feel free to write us. We love hearing from you. Be aware that if you write us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service. Go, Postal Unions. Let around the air, unless you say otherwise. 
We do love hearing from you. Don't forget our gourmet coffee guideline. If you can afford to buy an espresso-based beverage for yourself, buy one for us. This is not charity. This is our job. And we need it to pay our bills. Approximately 1% of our listeners support this podcast with a contribution. And yes, you can too. You can. Here's how you do it. You go to our website. It's so easy. You go to our website, prolefpod.com. There's a little list of things that you can do. Our PayPal, postal address information, Patreon, GoFundMe. It's all there. You can click and you can donate. Go to proleftpod.com. You can also buy merch, which, you know, you'd get merch. We have both sides don't bumper stickers. We do. Come on, people. We, do. We, have, we have let justice be done, though the heavens fall bumper sticker, which is a little much, perhaps. That's in Latin. You have that yeah. in Latin on yeah. the bumper sticker. Yeah, that's pretty. That that You're a real hardcore Drift Glass fan. Elitist. You're an elitist. elitist. You're a goddamn elitist. Who is letting Drift Glass's monster loose if you buy that bumper <laughs> sticker? Go ahead. Go ahead. Double dare you. Double dare you. <laughs> Please share our show on Facebook or Twitter. And thank you for doing that. Hey, Drift Glass, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? Well, Blue Gal, the Internet Kitties are kind of pissed. I mean, they have over 30 Ronnie Jackson so unqualified that jokes. They're just going to go to waste now. Let's think about living. Let's think about loving. Let's think about the hooping and the hopping and the bopping and the loving, loving, dubbing. Let's forget about the whining and the crying, the shooting and the dying, and the fellow with a switchblade knife. Let's think about living. Let's think about life. The Professional Left Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license. Copyright 2018, DGBG Productions Incorporated.